Hello guys, and welcome back to the big one. It's the big one. It's Jack Makes Happy Hour Ween. You got it right. And I've just got to say right off the bat, if you're listening to this on iTunes or any of those audio kind of uh, platforms, get over to YouTube because we've had our faces done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a vampire. You are. I don't have the teeth. No, we had a bit of an issue with the teeth. The teeth wouldn't stick on. Are you, why you got a coat on, Stevie? That's not part of your... This is the first time I've ever been in and I've felt cold. And as Jordan's pointed out, I'm a zombie. Method so, actor. Method actor. Oh. Dead inside, cold at work. See, you've got on your cheeks, you've got many holes, and it's making me feel a bit sick. That's good. <laughs> because, you know, what's that fear called? Trip- trypophobia. 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 I have a little fear bit of, of that. Crumpets. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I have a little bit of that, and... You, that's fucking. Does that not make you feel sick? I know the... what you mean. Is it meant to be holes or meant to be like blood spatter? Oh, I don't know what I look like. No, no, that's meant to be holes. I think. Uh, uh, Jordan, yeah. you are. I am the devil. You are Satan himself. I am indeed. Yours is the best. Thanks. It's sick, isn't it? <laughs> it is really <laughs> good. She is good. <laughs> she is good. That is good. Uh, yeah. yeah, we we had a, we had a makeup artist called Georgie. Uh, yeah. Come in. I should really plug her Instagram here, yeah. but you don't know you it. Can't remember I can't it, can remember you? it. I can't remember. We'll put it in the links on YouTube. I'll put it, I'll put it in the yeah. links. I am quite excited out. to see Jordan try to take his makeup off. But... <laughs> yeah. Why have um, you got four horns? Right. So she said to me, "Do you want big horns or little horns, or do you want to have all of them?" And I was like, "Ah, fuck it, put them all on, girl." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, four, "I said four horns." <laughs> I've never had horns before, so I thought I'd go all out. And um, I'm gonna. I guess right before before. <laughs> I did a poll. I don't know if you saw this. Yeah, on, I did. <laughs> on on a, a happy hour Twitter the other day. You might want to just fill some time while I get that while I get this poll up. Well, I got no. Don't worry about it. The poll was basically I asked the audience who we should get on as a guest, and I gave them four options. Who were the options? Can you remember? I remember one of them. <laughs> one of them was Beyonce. <laughs> one, one of, I, I think another one was like uh, a U.S. president, and I think the other one was like David Beckham. Yeah. Or Robbie Knox. And Robbie Knox, you 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 ran away with it. You won the whole thing. Well, you asked me like a few weeks ago, so it'd be really awkward if I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah, since... I'd invite me because David Beckham would go, yeah, I'll do it. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of knew you'd win. Do you yeah, know? yeah, no, I'd be pretty confident. <laughs> should, 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 should we address what, what he's got in his you, face? Yeah, you, you're quite a sad... <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know. Sad clown. I wanted to be a sexy cat. But, <laughs> but Jack didn't have any so ears. I'm a clown. I liked your last minute decision of the dressing gown as well. Yeah, it's all right. Good look at it. <laughs> Complete it, it, it. It's just, yeah, it's made you look absolutely mental. So when yeah. you were walking down the corridor outside, going for a wee a minute ago, we're in, what, what would you, we're in like a block of offices, really, aren't <laughs> yeah, we? Yeah, imagine yeah. knocking off work, which is when we're starting this. You've had a long day and you see you walking down the corridor. Yeah. I mean, oh, for anyone who's, who's a fan of audio, just, they are really missing yeah, out, aren't just, they? All I can say is if I was them, I'd be like, oh my God, I hope he does not have an Uzi. And, we, <laughs> and it's not like it's Halloween now. It's still far away. It's really quite in advance. It's far away from Halloween yeah. for it to be weird. Yeah. People haven't realised it's Halloween yet. This is my point yeah. of this. You're all driving um, home. Yeah. yeah. I'm keeping this. I'm going to go for a McDonald's drive through oh, That's a great. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> we have to get a tube and a train. Oh, no. Like this. Robbie, please tell me you're going to keep that on. Uh, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Halloween, guys. It is October the 31st. We've done a few podcasts on the run up to, to this show, but this is the big one. Today, we're going to be discussing a whole array of scary, spooky topics from trick or treating to ghost stories. We even got you guys at home to email in your ghost yeah. stories. We're going to be analyzing them. Stevie, um, you you did a, you hosted an episode a little while ago called Urban Legends. I did indeed. Part two recently dropped. It's a bit of a fan favorite, much like the ghost one. Um, yeah, you got good. more for us today. I have. What, and you ain't even got a notepad? You're just off the dome piece. All up here, boy. Oh, nice, nice. Robbie, this question's for you. Oh. It's pro- I imagine... Well, how old are your, how old are your kids? Uh, eight, five, and two. So are they at the age where they do trick or treat in? Is that... Yeah, they love it, yeah. Oh, really? They're really into it, yeah. I was going to say, I was going to start by saying that it's probably been a while since you've been trick or treating, but it's pr- you've probably been more recently than any of us. Well, no, I haven't. I don't think I've ever been trick or treating. Because well, it... when I was a kid, it wasn't really a thing. You see, I did a, I did a video about um, months of the year and said October was the worst. Mm. 
that everyone <laughs> under 30 has gone, October's the best month, what you're talking about. I think there's an age divide, because I think that was sort of an American holiday before when I was younger, and now it's become more oh, British. Right. So we didn't really have trick-or-treating, I don't think. But, so, but you, uh, that's weird, isn't yeah, it? I, didn't, I mean, a few people did it, but it wasn't like you wouldn't get loads of people right. come around. So were you, like, were you mental if you ended up, if you actually took part in it? Like, were, were people who were answering the doors, were they l- l- less accepting of it? Were they like, fuck off, mate, what are you doing? I don't know. I think there was more emphasis, maybe just where I grew up, on the trick element, and people would like <laughs> just like do things to people's houses. I don't know if that still happens anymore, or whether everyone just gets... I mean, it does, so, yeah, but I, w- I was thinking the other day, there's very few tricks out there now, is there? Uh, it, not even when you were a kid. No. Up. Oh, mate, the best one I ever saw, a guy, a guy I knew, um, he's a bit... He's a bit... Um, Where's this going? Tapped. <laughs> oh, but okay. nah, mate, he, 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 <laughs> he took a shit in a paper bag, set fire to it, knocked on someone's door, so he came out and stamped all over it, yeah. That's a, that's a classic. That yeah. used to be on TV, on like yeah. American films all the time. Him do, I saw him do it with my own eyes. You yeah. saw him, what you saw the... No, I, didn't, I, I didn't see him poo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, poo again. No, I didn't see him poo in there, but I saw... I didn't see him poo into the bag, but I saw his poo in the bag. Mm. Gave it a sniff. Can verify was not fake. Oh. And then, yeah, set, set it on someone's doorstep. <laughs> set fire, set fire <laughs> to the corner. That seemed unnecessary. Like, what? 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 Like, just smelling it. Well, no, no. I just, I no this listen, I know what the comments are like. They're like, oh, yeah, it's probably just a fake poo. Well, it wasn't. All right. I'm just but, clarifying. But that. that's, that's all well and good that you're trying to clarify for the comments. Yeah. Yeah. But in that moment, you didn't know you were going to be talking about this right no, now. No. In that <laughs> moment, you went, let me smell that before you do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Because in, in 15 years' time, yeah. I might be doing a podcast. This might come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it'll really <laughs> aggravate yeah. me if people don't believe in that's, the sincerity that's of the guy did it. I'll, I'll Gordon that. Nopes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, all right, that's a valid point, Steve. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've just had a fascination with poo, I think. But anyway, that's just a trick that they're probably the best one I've ever seen. Okay, so yeah. uh, as... Flower, as Flower bombs and stuff. As kids, were you ever the kind of kids that would trick people? What? I feel like the answer's obvious here. What? I was just knocking on doors hoping they'd give me candy. Did, Other than I would never trick someone. Did okay. So how about this? What what was? Have you ever had a trick played on you? AKA, what was the shittest thing somebody gave you? Not around Halloween. I think it was a very. I felt. I thought it was quite an innocent thing as a kid. Well, it is. Yeah, I don't think anything bad ever happened. That's what I mean. Like by the time I was old enough for bad things to happen, I wasn't doing it anymore. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once paedophiles were on the rise, I was already out of there. <laughs> what, <is> that, <laughs> what does that mean? Like, as in, like, no one's going to play a trick on, like, an eight-year-old, but, like, they might start doing it like, teenagers, but I wasn't trick-or-treating then, so... Yeah, because you always get that one guy yeah. that trick-or-treats way too, like, <laughs> yeah. way too old. Old, yeah. 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 We had Boy. some guy r- uh, around our way. My nan um, and granddad, they're all, a- all about it. Like, they'll help out all the little kids and that. My granddad more than my nan. Um... <laughs> Relevant. <laughs> that made it sound like he was a. Like, oh, my granddad's. <laughs> He'd go the extra just, mile. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, but we had a. Um, what's it called? What's the Chris? Why can I not remember the name? What are the Christmas versions of trick or treaters? Oh, carol, carol singers. singers. Yes. <laughs> what <laughs> right? is wrong with you today? We have. There's one man that yeah. just knocks on the door on his own. Right. Is that not mental? What, a carol Halloween? Singer. Or, yeah, carol singer. Oh, carol singer. But like, he's... Ah, he might just like singing. He's like a year or two, I, th- I imagine he's like a, a little bit younger than me, and right. he'll just sing Jingle Bells, and then he'll ask for a quid. <laughs> <laughs> he might be asking what? some money, like... <laughs> yeah, but I'm, that's not on. No, yeah, but no, do you know what? Yeah, but carol singing's different, isn't it? Because you're, you're is showcasing you a talent. Yeah, no, not... yeah, what by going? You, I've, this was one of my first ever YouTube videos. I spoke about him because he. Do you remember Dappy from Endubs? Yeah, he yeah. used to wear the the Dappy hat with right. the two strings and the baubles on the end. Yeah, and like I remember one year I answered the door, right. completely forgetting it was Carol singing "Fucking Time," and uh, he just stared at me and was like, "And I'm pretty sure I remember him from being the year under me at school." <laughs> and he was just like, "Jingle bells, jingle <laughs> bells," and he's just looking in my eyes, and I was just like, <laughs> "I hate everything about this." <laughs> and then at the end, he just held out his hand. What did you do? Shook it. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> no, I didn't know what to do. Why? Why? Sh- why? You're coming? To- why? I've not asked. For- I've not requested yeah. that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Would you? Yeah, I know you I mean. That's a hell of a Halloween story. I don't know people do carol <laughs> singing now. Do, do you get many people come around your house? No. no. 
I don't think so. Yeah, but I live on the top floor of a block of flats. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> even weirder. That's very They're fucking key, out yeah. of breath. Yeah. Well, what was the? Let's go back to the Halloween. The Halloween. That's show. quite a good thing to talk about. Yeah. yeah. What was the worst thing you was ever given? Ah, uh, fruit. Yeah, yeah fruit, no, as no a one kid, fruit, yeah. you know, it's like fuck off. Yeah, if if this is terrible, but whenever I'd get fruit, I'd that'd be going straight. <laughs> Straight at their window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, there was w- there was one house we blacklisted as kids because it'd be oranges every year, and it was shit. Oh, the best thing I ever got given was help. was a was a massive multi pack of Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> that's somebody that's given up on answering the door yeah. anymore. Like, Please just, fuck off. Yeah. No, I've got nothing left. Just take the bag. And my mate swears, I don't know if it's true, but my mate swears that he was given <laughs> six pre peeled bananas. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why? I like the thought there's a guy peeling bananas going five? No, no, that was him tight. <laughs> Just do a six. Oh, so did you uh, did you take your kids out last year? Well, I'm, I'm not I'm not the best guest for this because no, my wife did and I just stayed at home. But I was in charge of then giving out sweets to children who came round. <laughs> right. I, bet that looked, that? I bet that looked fucking mental. I hope you all dressed like that. Yeah, I mean I didn't look like this at the time. <laughs> No, uh, do you think Halloween? Ax. <laughs> <laughs> do you think I, one old man? Well, I I dressed up as this like gargoyle once, and I had this huge nose. And I just remember the one old. I was a kid as well. I don't know if this like scarred me. I've got vivid memories. It was on like a piece of elastic, and uh, he just I answered the he answered the door, and he just grabbed my nose, pulled it off my face, <laughs> slammed it back into my face. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, oh. I don't know what that was about. Wow, bastard. Do you think Halloween is is um is a dying thing in the UK? Or do you think it's on the rise? Oh, it's definitely on the rise. Do you? Well, compared to when I was younger and it wasn't really a thing. Yeah, I think mm. we struggle to see it now because we, yeah. as kids, it was massive. But then the older you've got, it kind of feels like it's dying. But then, because yeah. we don't deal with kids yeah. going, whereas yeah. you've obviously got your kids who still yeah, love it. Yeah, we get so. a lot of kids come around. I get one of those big bags of like, the big pots of like Malware yeah. yeah. types of st- yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Just dish those out. And then after a while when I get bored answering the door, I just because we've got a driver, I just go to the end of the drive, put a pumpkin there and the big box of sweets just say help yourself because I can't be asked getting up anymore. But then <laughs> are you not are you not worried you're gonna get that one snidey kid that's just gonna take them all? I live quite a nice area. We're oh right. dear. Yeah, it's all right. Dear. Nice. No, so Good little tip if you are a snidey kid, come around near me. And <laughs> that is, that's that's a lot. If there's any no, no. snidey kids watching, but, but at the beginning, I wouldn't do it, but by the end, I can't bother. If someone takes them all, it's not the end of the world, it's fine. See, that would piss me off. That would piss me off. Like, you always get that one kid who's just, yeah, when you knock on different doors, you kind of, after a while, you get to remember what the good houses are and what the bad houses yeah. are. Yeah. And some people would give you the sweets, yeah. and some other people would hold the bag and open. you can grab yeah. what you want. Yeah, yeah that, I yeah. bet you did. Of course I, I did. Did you not see the size of me as a kid? I will tell if a kid's taking the piss, I will tell him. Yeah. No, I yeah. won't. I'm not. What will you say, Robbie? I'll say, don't take too many or something like that. <laughs> I expected so much more yeah. then. I like I like You're the fucker. idea. <laughs> I like the idea of him actually uh, just putting out a tub and saying, help yourself, but having it empty to start. Yeah. So no one's going to knock on your door. They're just going to oh, assume all the sweets good, yeah. have gone. Yeah. You're welcome yeah, for that one. I mean, I, 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 should, have... I don't mind giving the kids the sweets, though. It's not. What are we do with? Then I need to buy a box, <laughs> empty it out of sweets, and just leave a box. Have you heard that there's things online? Um, what was it that they're that aren't people dousing their sweets in I, in I, drugs? I feel like this has always been like a rumor. <laughs> Like, oh, don't eat, you know, kiwis because people put nails in them. It's like, oh, fucking shut up. You know, I feel like it's, I feel like it's one of them <laughs> Facebook. Someone say I feel like it's one of them pa- Facebook posts <laughs> that have niche. just run amok. I mean, see, I know I've heard this before. Like, oh, you know, someone's giving out sweets doused in MDMA. Like, who the fuck is wasting their MDMA <laughs> yeah. on kids? You know, that's what you got to think. I think it's just. Just, just another bullshit post for people on Facebook to read to to repost. Yeah, Facebook know? is the graveyard of, of, <laughs> yeah. of social media. Like they'll repost. All oh, kids are getting MDMA sweets on Halloween, and you know Brexit means Brexit in the next <laughs> two minutes. You know, so it's just like just ignore it. I That's think. I, I think in a, off off that topic in a future podcast, I just want to spend. Maybe 15 minutes just going through my granddad's feed. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff he shares. In fact, <laughs> let's I, do it now. It's Halloween. Some oh, of the stuff he's posting is scary enough. While I get this up, 
I want. Uh, what's the What's the most creative Halloween? And <laughs> what are you doing? I've got, I've got something funny that I'm gonna. I'll, I'll I want on the similar topic of horrific Facebook things, but okay. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it in a break when everyone, someone else is talking. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's posted two minutes ago. Oh, oh, hello. I didn't even go on his page. It's come up with my home feed. I don't know if it's gonna be good or bad. It might just be something normal. <laughs> Oh, no. I was going to make a terrible joke. I'm not going to do it. I've said stage four too much on this podcast. You have. Uh, it's your favourite. Two minutes ago, anyone who thinks they're too small to make a difference has never met a honeybee. <laughs> what? Fuck <laughs> me. Uh, that, that's quite the contrast of his normal post. Racist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there'll be plenty of them. There'll be plenty of them. Right, let's oh, see. Uh, yeah. School in Lincolnshire, marked down by Ofsted for being... This is... This is... <laughs> This is the thing as well. He never facts. He never checks any facts, right? Yeah. Bruce uh, Bruce Springsteen. He's alive, right? Yeah. Yep. He he's, ca- he's he's born the exact same in day and year as my mum. Oh really? <laughs> there you go. There you so, go. And my mum's seventieth birthday was the other day. So Bruce Springsteen's just turned seventy. Oh, happy birthday, Robbie's <laughs> mum and Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, yeah he there came. He, my granddad like has a little office at the bottom of the shed and uh, at the bottom of the garden. And he came up the other day and he was like, and he's like Bruce Springsteen's dead. <laughs> <And I> was, <laughs> Is he? Like, I've not heard anything. He's like, it's on Facebook. So I was like, <laughs> right. And this is a guy that constantly goes on about fake news, right? Any, any, <laughs> any anything Donald um, Trump says, he will regurgitate. Yeah. And and another brilliant thing is where you can complain about something that's pretty severe in your life, and he'll call you a snowflake. Right. So you can be like, <laughs> yeah, my my um mate's injured. He's not playing all season. Why is he not playing? Oh, he's just done his ACL, ruptured his knee and four play <laughs> fucking snowflake. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just posted one a minute ago. And again, this is where's the facts here? It's 35 minutes ago. He's so active on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> he's more active on social media than any of us in this room. <laughs> right, school in Lincolnshire, marked down by by Ofsted for being too white <laughs> and oh. too English. And then at the bottom, share if you're sick of anti-English racism. <laughs> God. Oh, that's, oh, Who that's, posted that, that? that's the true horror I in know. this country right yeah. now. When are us middle class white guys going to get a break? <laughs> oh, no. When's it our turn? Oh. <laughs> Show Bor- me the privilege. I dare you. There's a picture of <laughs> Boris here. Um, Boris says we've got a great new Brexit deal. No, Boris, it's not great. It's not new. It's not Brexit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Stop saying Leave voters did not know what they were voting for. I knew exactly what I was voting for. Share if you agree. <laughs> fucking hell. I love that all of those posts end with share this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, fucking hell. What does this mean? The... So it's, a, it's, a, it's Prince Charles in front of a weather forecast, and it says, <laughs> this weather is shit. It's been raining longer than my fucking mother. Is that oh, ra- it's because his mum's the queen. Rain. 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 Oh, <laughs> right, but they've just spelled it R-A-I. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that only works if words. you say it. It doesn't work <laughs> if you write it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's plenty of oh, them. Robbie, dear. what have you got for us, Robbie? Uh, do you know what? It's, it's too... I've got a Facebook group. You know, you get added to a group by someone who's in there like, 60s or something like that yeah and then it's just loads of mental people arguing like someone just started a group i don't know why they started the group for i can't remember what what the reason was or just to say hello to everyone or one of those weird chain messages or something yeah and then it just descends into people going i'm not sure why i'm supposed to be here get me off this crap now and people don't know they can just leave the group <laughs> uh, and then someone's done like a little heart emoji like a little, a little gif of someone doing a heart so i'm saying don't send me junk how do you cancel this <laughs> so i'm saying no need to be rude i'm only replying to the person who started the group i did not ask you to include me on this i have no idea what it is i have problems talk to my daughter anita <laughs> what, <laughs> oh, what? Uh, i don't know oh, i love all the people and then on someone else goes media. i haven't included you in this your friend sent a message of a heart to a group of his friends and you were on there. If you'd like to leave, click on the top and then at the bottom it says leave chat. <laughs> okay, at the moment I am answering texts from my friends that need to talk to me. Sorry, okay. Oh, fuck and, it's just, and I'm just going, why am I? It's just to send like a picture of a heart to everyone. Like, what, what is going on? so angry. Have you seen um, that one of that old lady's put... Um, 
<clears throat> how do how <laughs> it's like how do I delete my friend from school? Uh, I don't like her. She is a bitch. And then so, <laughs> and then somebody commented on it, going, "What you have to do is write type that at symbol, <laughs> and then and then the name, and it will get rid of them." <laughs> so the next comment is at Dorothy Gray or whatever, uh, and then Dorothy exposed. Dorothy Gray's gone. Oh hi Sandra, how are you? And then she's not too bad. She <laughs> 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 just had a full conversation. Oh, 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 speaking of, I've got some form of a segue if you want it. Go on. So speaking of social media, I put a tweet out the other week. Mm. It was uh, just, <laughs> if you definitely had a paedophile teacher in your school, hit retweet. And they uh, got 52,000 retweets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> fucking scary. Yeah. Yeah. It went global. Uh, you know, the whole conspiracy, you know, like, oh, we're all being ruled by a paedophile ring. Yeah. It's definitely true. Um, and uh, yeah, Rob, you ever had a paedophile yeah, teacher? Yeah, we had a paedophile teacher who's been in the papers like a proper <laughs> high, high <laughs> end pedo. Class. The so, best ones are the ones that get caught. No, he was, no, to be honest, I quite liked him as a teacher. Um, <laughs> but, like, I never, I don't, honestly, I never, there's nothing. He wasn't Untoward. an obvious. There were teachers that I definitely thought, yeah, that bloke's a pedo. I didn't think this guy was a pedo, so he hit it quite well. <laughs> yeah. um, but we went on a trip to uh, France canoeing. I don't know how that happened at school. I don't know. I don't know That's how quite impressive. It's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we went canoeing in France, and um, and he was there. And I remember uh, I was talking to him, and he said that this is going back. Do you remember that, you know, that in the House Martins? They had a song called "Caravan of Love." Um, it was quite popular. It's like a sort of. Is that the one that goes? And every man join the caravan, caravan of love. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sorry, yeah, I thought you were going to join. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he said that he sung. <clears throat> he was. He sung on that song. And as kids, we believed him. Anyway, yeah. left the school, and moved on. And it was only years later. I thought, what a annoying lie to tell kids. Like, okay, we just believe anything. Why would you make that up? What a loser <laughs> that bloke was to make it up. And it annoyed me a little bit. He made. <laughs> Being made up that he's in the house. I, 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 have, I have a feeling he's done a lot worse than make up that he <laughs> well, was in a sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, <laughs> saying, and I mentioned this to a few times. I remember we had this teacher, Mr. Roth. I can say his name because he's in the papers and stuff. Right. Um, we had this teacher, and he used to claim he was in in the house. House Martins or some of this House Martins song, and he made what, it up. Well, yeah, what weird. was he getting out of that though? Yeah. Exactly, it was a weird lie, and I thought, well, <clears throat> and he's only impressing like. 11 year olds but right I mean, oh, so I think out. that was yeah his yeah. target audience <laughs> anyway yeah. so years later this is in about probably about 2006 <clears> he was in the paper it was a like, proper full page article in the times he'd been like abusing kids at various schools and um and there was a full this full report through it I read the whole thing about the sentencing about what he'd done it was quite horrific it takes quite a lot to get a full page in a mm. in the times newspaper like that and it went down and he got to the last paragraph and it said um Bruce Roth who as a student in Hull in the 1980s, sung backing vocals on the House Martins <laughs> Caravan of Love. <laughs> I was like, I've been besmirching this man's good <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I owe an apology. Oh, <laughs> no. And it was true. Oh, did you write to him? T- no, I, d- I didn't. I didn't <laughs> but, much, no. but he did touch kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> but he wasn't a liar. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was honest in no, his work. He's, he's not great, but yeah. he did. <laughs> he I, did I, actually. I, yeah. What a, what a, what an honourable man! I think yeah, little yeah, lies like I, that. I, are I, right. I really owe him an apology. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, did you have a Nancy teacher? Um, no, but I know mm. one of my teachers once. Your nan's a teacher, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. No. I I finished my point, then I made a new separate point. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, my nan was. She was. You you had her as a teacher, didn't you? She was a In dinner lady, old, weren't she? No, she was playgroup. Nurse, like the playgroup before we went into Dowson First School. What was her teaching name? <laughs> what? <laughs> teaching name? <laughs> he knows why he's asking. <laughs> no, it was like WWE. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, like what was her surname? Oh, was... Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, go on. No, so she's not it's... a paedophile. Remember, she's not a paedophile. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to have to write this down. Hang on. <laughs> you know, not, not... <laughs> so her name was uh, Mrs. Cox. <laughs> Um, oh. Straight to it, Jack went for the easy laugh there. So she she was not a nonce. It was just Mrs. before she met me. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her the cock. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. You oh. were in playground. Before group. she was just Cox, and now she misses Cox. 
<laughs> Guys, this is my nan. Uh, I mean, the bar on this on this podcast has been set yeah. very, very low. I used uh, to tell a lie when I was at school all the time. Um, that you were but... straight. <laughs> <laughs> Still telling it. Is, uh, um, we've probably gone back to school here, haven't we? Like, it's just, it's like we're there now. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to tell people... Spit bomb. Fuck off. <laughs> I used to tell people that my cousin was the son in the Teletubbies. See, this is a thing Why? that when we did that video a while ago and you couldn't believe that people were photoshopping me in the Teletubby son. Yeah. That's a thing. It, why? Like, because everyone has someone who looked like that baby. So I just said my cousin was that. the same. Like, have you that's ever been. Actually, that's, that's not relevant. Have you ever all, been bro. on a website? And I know there's an easy joke here, but like a website that you're not supposed to be on, right? For example, a YouTube download web, like, yes. site, right? No, and, well, no, but yes. But on the, <laughs> yeah, on the bottom of those websites, they have those really weird adverts. Yeah. yeah. So, like, this like, simple pill will make your penis grow 18 feet. <laughs> and yeah. And stuff yeah, like yeah that. weird. Hot mills in your area. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't but, click it. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. That's how we ended up with my nan. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one that has the picture of the uh, the baby from the Teletubbies. Oh, is that? Yeah, yeah, and it says... Um, Hot milk says, down to five. Yeah. <laughs> Hot local suns in your area. <laughs> no, and it says, um, the, uh, click here to see what the Teletubby sun looks like now. Like, she is so attractive. There was one that was a picture of Richard Gere, and it said, Richard, <laughs> Richard Gere's bank account makes, makes his whole entire family cry. <laughs> what? <laughs> What that's does that even mean? creative, though. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What, is it high or low? I don't <laughs> is he really poor yeah. now? I feel, I feel like he's collapsed, like his yeah. career's gone. I don't really know Richard Gere is, but I just see it come up. And yeah, I think poor guy. Really. He's the bloke from Pretty Woman. Yeah, is he the he's one not... who had a hamster up his ass? Is that, <laughs> that one? <laughs> we cannot <laughs> pick this bar up, can we? Um, no. I, th- I think sure he might it. be the person who was rumoured to. Rumoured, yeah, allegedly. sorry, rumoured, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, a nice... I mean, talking of rumours, yeah. uh, we're going to go for a little break there, and when we come back... <laughs> Do you know the definition of rumour? <laughs> 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 How have you gone from a rumour to a break? <laughs> yeah. Hear me out. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Hear me out. Sorry. Talking of rumours, <laughs> uh, we're going to go for a little break there, and when we come back, Stevie's going to be hitting us with some urban legends that are like that are like rumors that have progressed (laughs) and developed over time (laughs) yeah let's do that yeah see you in a bit hello guys and welcome back to happy hour ween we're all still happy because it's still halloween and in the break (laughs) in the break we were slightly um discussing the the pedo teachers yeah and I, well, I did. I did a video to follow up on this viral tweet I did, and in the break, <laughs> I just checked my analytics like I always do, and I had a hor- It's not funny. I had a no, horrific- it is. Trust me, I've heard it is. <laughs> I had a horrific comment. Yeah. Uh, so on my video, the biggest problem in the UK nobody is talking about, <clears throat> which is about pedo teachers. Someone commented. Here's one for you. Oh. A teacher at my school used to say he could smell if a girl was a virgin or not. So, But surely at school, most girls should... Every, but most people at school should be virgins. Oh, so basically what, what he was really doing... He's going, nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah. what sir, is... sir, why are you talking to his... Oh, no, just... There's got to be a bit when he says that, where he's going, oh, this might make me sound a bit weird. <laughs> but I have this kind of superpower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can I just say how mental yeah. you look still, Robbie? <laughs> yeah. Just adds to everything that you say. Thank you, mate. Um, the the uh, main bulk of these episodes when we planned them a while ago was to basically just discuss and dissect the guests' experiences with the paranormal. Literally the worst possible <laughs> guest. Oh. You don't have any, do you? No, because it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> you you had one. You went on the ghost tour then. That's an experience. <laughs> that real, right? I went on that. Do you know what? So we're talking I about actually... the uh, haunt, the haunting of Howitch Fort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that actually, it does make me. That experience does make me think maybe there is something in it. Oh, because I, no, I because the, the only reason being, if you were gonna make it up, you'd make it up better than that. <laughs> like, I'm not. Do you know what I mean? It's like 
Like they didn't. There was not much really happened, did it? No. no. It and if you were going to fake it, you'd have faked it more. So make me think. Oh, maybe it was just a bad night at the game. Oh, so shop. You're, yeah. <laughs> so your logic. Yeah. So you're mm. saying because they didn't fake it yeah. better, they've experienced shit before, and they just yeah, assumed it would happen again. Because the way they were saying beforehand, again, like, oh, everyone was shaking. People were like impaled like, on impaled anchors, impaled on anchors and, and stuff like yeah. that. And then we get there, and someone goes, "Was that a to the creek?" No, it's just the wind, mate. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you wouldn't. If you're going to be on like a sort of fairly high profile sort of video sort of mm. thing, you wouldn't. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Jack, Jack was in it, wasn't yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, um, If you were if you were going to be on on this platform and you were making it up, you'd make it's it like up. It's like a showcase. Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't yeah. tell all the great things that happened and then it'd be a bit yeah, shit. shit. So yeah. I wonder whether maybe there is something in it. Yeah, Would you, I like but but purely because they didn't put effort in. Well, yeah. no, I'm so saying, no well, I'm not saying that they didn't put effort in. I'm saying. If like they would have put effort in if they were going to fake it, they'd have put more. If they didn't in. think something could have happened, yeah. yeah. In their minds, they clearly thought something more would happen. Yeah, because yeah. it's real. And, and you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? If you, if you genuinely yeah. could see ghosts, <clears throat> and then the ghosts are just sat there going, you know, right, come out, ghost, show friends. They're going, nah, you're all right, mate. Like, Fucking hell, ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, do me a favour. <laughs> 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 would you would you yeah. go on one of those things, Stevie? Yeah, I would have I would have gone if I could have. Yeah. As in I was at work and I yeah. did get yeah. invited. Yeah. <laughs> he was Stevie was invited. Would I you, was work and I couldn't. Would you go on another one, Robbie? Yeah. You would. That's just yeah. as well, because I did say if it gets two and a half thousand likes before midnight, we'd do a part two and it did. So, so Jan- January? I'd I'd say just we'll get a big I think there's like a, I think there's like a fucking like haunted mansion. Yeah, what would you in prefer? Manchester, and just we'll just go round, but without any sort of yeah bullshitters. Because like I'm not being funny. We could stand in a room and be like, "Is anybody here? Make a noise." But would you know how to close down and open up and all well, that? Well, not need today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Allegedly, I don't. <laughs> You'd have to buy your own remote control thing with the lights that go up and down. Yeah, but well. Well, I because I, yeah. I googled that when we yeah. were there. I put, saw it on Amazon. It's thirteen quid. Right. Well, there we go. Then we'll chip in. That's the thing. I would. I would. If, mate, you, go on, sorry. if if that's how you make your money, yeah. Would you have a little thirteen quid one? I know what you mean. You'd yeah, you'd go fucking... high range. That was almost yeah, like, like Ghostbusters having some some guns out of them little twenty p machines at the front of Spa. <laughs> yeah, do you remember yeah. them things? You used to put the twenty p yeah. and turn the yeah. thing. That's that. That's that equivalent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? What's the What's the scariest? Are we down on Harwich for? That's up to you. It's fine. They'll, they'll DM me, not you. So it's, 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 <laughs> I'm the target. It's fine. What's no, the I'm scariest joking. thing that's ever happened to you? Because I've been. Oh. I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to go first, but I've been holding my story back during these Halloween episodes. Have you? Yeah, been, I told you about saving the, a corker. I did fall. I did tell you about the time I fell over in the suitcase, and that was scary. Yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. that no, was I'll scary. That. I I'll had um, I had to go. To, uh, no, I told you that actually about going to hospital. <clears throat> Would I lie to you? Because my brother and sister used to push me down the stairs. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I've got a weird pedo story though. Oh brilliant. We used to cycle up and down the road in my old house. <clears throat> So I would have been about four, five, no, five, six ish. So we yeah. used to bike just up and down the road, me and my brother and my sister. They're yeah. both older than me. So obviously they could ride a bike by this point. Yeah. Um, and we heard this weird rumor about a guy at the end of our road being a pedo. And we were just going up and down the road. You jump off the curb at the end, thinking, oh, we're cool. We went down a curb, come back around yeah. and just do the circle. And then he was just stood at his gate watching us. And we just kept going. And it scared my sister so much. She flew over her handlebars and scraped and cut up all of oh. her face. And then we had to quickly, obviously, cycle back because Pedo might have tried to help her out. Pedo what? Pedo might Mark. have tried to help her out. <laughs> oh, might. I thought he said Pedo Mark. <laughs> I thought he said Pedo Martin. <laughs> that's, that's definitely that's a better a Pedo, Pedo name. name. <laughs> Pedo Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, so, so, so that story there, I've said to you, what is the scariest thing that's ever happened here? And you've said there was a man just stood in his garden. <laughs> yeah, so that, at your sister. All right. Like yeah. I've actually just thought of another, um, that's reminded me of a sort of trick or treaty. Ooh. Story thing. Our yeah. friend Jim, um, uh, when he was growing up, it lived in quite, quite a sort of nice area, and now uh, they'd go trick or treating. So he's my age. They go trick or treating around the houses, um, and they in a group of people with like a, loads of kids going around at once with their parents like that. And because it's like the eighties, there was there was one gay couple there, right? And he said apparently when he got taken there, his mum would hold on to the back of his shirt when oh they went to the gay God. couple, really like that because wow, just in case they dragged him in, in case yeah, because. 
they for some that reason the they would just grab yeah, with crazy. Them, but they might just and also not be able to control themselves and just <laughs> grab a child in front of their parents <laughs> horrendous fuck <laughs> it <laughs> uh, Jesus. should we do some urban legends uh, I thought you wanted dude. to say your scary well, story well, I, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what I can tell you yeah. I can tell you a ghost story that the makeup artist told me about an hour ago <gasps> what yeah she was telling me she was when were you having face. these kind of conversations you, you, I don't, you, where did you two go you were doing something we went <laughs> what did we... I don't know. Jack, Jack and I went nowhere. You so... went somewhere. Anyway, she no. And she said, "What makes this even more believable is that the woman that told her this, which is her friend's mum, is like a massive skeptic. So yeah. still to this day, after all this shit, she's still like, oh, it's got to be an explanation. But there's one. So she basically she lived in this flat, and there was always weird shit going on, and like weird noises and banging cupboards and all the rest of it. Um. <clears throat> And she, she, it got, it got a bit much. It like got annoying, so she wanted to move out. And then every time someone would come and view the property, it would really amp up. Any time she had a man over, it would really amp up. But she said the weirdest thing: she thought it was just like sleep paralysis or something. She was laying there, and she could see something in the corner of her room at night. And she was like, "It's, it's she, like she's a very skeptical woman. Ah, oh, it's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. I'll just, just go, just try to get to sleep. Try to get to sleep. Gets to sleep in the morning." claims there was in this in the patch of carpet where this figure was there was maggots there was ash there was all like debris weird like debris burnt out debris in the spot where she saw this thing in the corner of her eye that night but she's still skeptical to this day she's still trying to make sense of it because she doesn't believe in ghosts and things but yeah, that's quite a spooky one. That's yeah. a bit Imagine weird. seeing something, then the next morning there's maggots in the exact area. I'm trying to think where that was. I'm trying to put a logical explanation. On I know. That. Any that's ideas? horrible, isn't it? <laughs> there isn't one, <laughs> unless someone was playing a prank. She single-handedly on her. proved it. There we go. We can wrap it up now. Unless she had Ghosts a dirt- exist. Yeah, unless she had a dirty room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was just her own was... like metaphorical demons just yeah. being like, for fuck's sake. Maybe the place You've the got maggots was, was a bin and it was like August. <laughs> yeah. God, I went there, there was like, maggots and stuff. Here. Yeah. There was a lot of debris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to save was... my scary story. <laughs> what, for another episode? This <laughs> is the one, mate. <laughs> this is for Christmas. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no uh, for uh, a bit later on, because I feel like the, the mood is quite comical at the moment. And I don't oh, my... you need it I to don't... be more somber. Yeah, I don't know if my scary story is is that funny. Okay. Right. So I want to hear some urban legends. Okay, so we um went through the ones with origins. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we've been through the good ones. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is the leftover. Which yeah. means well what I can kind of tell you are just kind of more scary stories than they are urban legends to a point but there's no origins behind them other than I think being told around the campfire and trying to scare people. Yeah, that to me, I would classify that as an urban legend. So this That's isn't it. this isn't much of a story behind this one, but it is a game we can all play if you ever fancy it. What can we, can we play it now? Uh, no. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Reason. Well, I'm just going to be getting off. <laughs> yeah. Bump um, along but, two hour special. Yeah. Right? So, so the reason the oh, reason we dear. can't play it now is because it needs to be played at a specific time. What? Oh. 11, 11. Midnight. Mm. Uh. Um, so you might have actually seen it. There's a film around this, and I've watched the film, and it's dreadful. Um, What's it called? The uh. Midnight Man. Oh, oh fuck it now. Yeah. So there's an actual That's game right. to play behind this, mm. right. and it's got really specific rules. So I'll read the rules out to you, and it's quite. Oh, it's quite weird. And it does say, warning, play this game at your own risk of torture and death. That's it's a, a good warning a good to put warning. on a game. Well, I'm not disclaimer. sure that disclaimer is going to stand up in court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We well, did warn you. Yeah. What's the reward from playing it? <laughs> Nothing. Because if torture and death is the is the warning. <laughs> then you're not too keen on I'm, playing. I'm trying to weigh up the pros and cons. <laughs> I think it's yeah. one of those where people like to be scared, don't you? You get a lot out of being scared and then afterwards you get a bit of a buzz off of it, don't you? Being like, oh, can you remember that? I'm fine now. Yeah. Um, so these are the rules. You'll need the following supplies to play. Paper, pencil, needle, candle, a box of matches, a door, and salt. Right. So you turn off all of the lights in your house. Every time. And you light a candle. You write your name on the paper, in first, the middle, and last. Prick your finger with the needle and add a drop of blood on the paper and allow it to soak in. I'm out. Place the paper with your name on the floor in front of the door. Knock on the door 22 times with the ticking of a clock but the 20-second knock must happen at 12 a.m. Open your door, 
blow out the candle and close it. You've now summoned the Midnight Man. <gasps> So, a lot of effort. Oh, mate. <laughs> Imagine if you missed it. Like, like, oh, <laughs> oh, I've missed yeah. it. Try again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bloody Mary, you just got to ask, yeah, it's ask a, bit a name easier. three yeah. times. But this one's a, a bit more intense. Or whatever it was. This is a full-on game after that. That's just to summon him. <laughs> oh, now right, now yeah. the game begins. Right. So at this point, as soon as you've opened the door and your candle's blown out, you need to relight it straight away. As I long am, as you're... So you've blown out the candle. Yeah, yeah you blow out the candle to summon him. <laughs> But then as soon as you've summoned him, you need to light the candle again. Right. right. At any point whilst your candle's lit, he can't get you. You're fine. Right. Cool. But your candle will obviously be blown out by things that are happening around the house and him chasing you, basically. So the game begins there. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously <laughs> that is happening now. He's yeah. summoned. Yeah. Um, so yeah. basically the whole goal of it is to avoid him at all costs. But, but, but why would that be the goal? Because you've summoned him. That's like yeah. because that, you you summon him and then the game is to escape. So it's kind of like you're doing it. For, oh, so it's, like it's, like not, the, it's like people who run with the balls in Spain. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. you're kind of doing it. You're doing it for, a for laugh, the adrenaline. But you yeah, don't get it's, it. all, yeah. it's all fun and games. So you get gored. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like um, knock knock run. Yeah. So so you, you could walk around the house. Um, nothing could be happening with your candle on. If he's ever near you, your candle will go out instantly. So uh, that's how you know he's around. Oh, that's how you know. Yeah. <laughs> not, not basic physics. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get cold, you'll hear a low whisper, and it'll appear in front of you. You have to relight the candle within 10 seconds. If you yeah. can't, you throw down a circle of salt around yourself, and you have to stay inside the circle until 3.33 a.m. in the morning. No, you don't. <laughs> if you're still... A... I love this final bit. This bit is quick taking question, a piss. Quick question. If you put the salt around where the candle is, can you relight the candle from within your circle and then put the salt away because the candle's lit again? It sounds like a lot of... Uh... Do you know what I mean? Like, no, no, it, yeah, that's a good question. It's a valid question. I'd like you to check so, thoroughly through the T's and C's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've you're are you in a circle or just the candle? Well, so you're trying to light the candle. You go, oh no, I've ten seconds up. You make your salt thing, but it's round the candle. Oh, you can well, relight the candle again, yeah. And then you'd have to wait till three thirty three. You could then leave the circle of salt, yeah. but then your candle will go out again, obviously. And then but, you'd make another one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. But Hello? you could run out of salt. Why do you keep saying obviously? Because this is, the, this is <laughs> yeah. what's happening. <laughs> but this, yeah. this, does, this whole game gets ruined. Um, oh. I know it hasn't been yet. It's quite good. By this final bit, because it says, if you're still alive at 3.33 a.m., you've won. <laughs> if not, you'll be tortured, sometimes to death. So and if you're dead, you'll be tortured to death? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so, so that bit doesn't quite make sense. And then it just ends with, come back and let us know if you've won the game. <laughs> that is so, fucking dreadful. So the only way of losing the game is to die. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, right. so you, if you die, you lose, basically. Um, <laughs> Most just, games. Just a general rule yeah. of thumb. <laughs> but, the, yeah, the weird thing about that is I've, I've seen the actual film and it's it's pretty fucked up. Like, a lot of weird shit happens in yeah. it. Um, so in the film, they play, that, they play it by those rules? Yeah, exactly like that. They do the salt. Um, they've the film has been taken from this game that's been passed down through stupid stories. I and bet whatnot. in the film, no one has figured out what Robbie figured out in the just here in the rules that you could just do make a circle, circle of salt around. and make the yeah. candle again. So yeah, the salt thing happens, but then um, this I think I think in the film he starts to cheat, <laughs> which is like the salt gets blown away by like oh, a window being open and bastard. stuff like that. And I think he actually breaks the salt chain at one point and kills someone. Uh, yeah, it's it's a gruesome film though. Give it a go. I but... just I'm less interested about that story and more interested about how unnecessarily awkward it it would have been for the person who made the film to film the salt flying away. Why? <laughs> Why could you not just get a fan and blow salt? Would salt show up on camera? If you had a lens closer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It. Like so, fine rain doesn't show up on an iPhone. Yeah, but it's yeah, a big circle of salt. Oh, you, oh I you'd use your sea salt flakes, wouldn't you? You wouldn't use your <laughs> table yeah. salt, I reckon. Can we have another one? That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do an actual oh, story. Dear. What do you mean an actual? <laughs> so that was a game. This is a right. this is a short short horror story. Quite right. very short. Rachel was having a sleepover and invited three people round, but only one girl, Leah. She actually came round. The girl spent two hours talking. I am um, sorry. So three, she's she, invited three people round. Only yeah. one of them's a gal. Oh, only, only one, only one of them showed up. Oh, that's a shame. The girl spent two hours talking and it was 11.30 when they decided to go to sleep. They shut the light and after a short while, Rachel heard a lot of rustling and then Leah counting softly in a strange voice. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. She turned over and got comfortable, thinking that it was just Leah's way of getting to sleep. Hey, on him, didn't you tell us this one before? No. Okay, right, go on. Um, Rachel woke up a few hours later to more rustling. Facing away from her friend, she saw the lights were on and then turned over and saw Leah's decapitated head and a hooded figure pulling one hair out of her head at a time. 565, 566, 567. <laughs> and then, so the whole story is that the counting was just plucking a hair at a time of some deranged murderer. If you've cut the head off, surely you could do that bit of admin at your own house. <laughs> bit of admin! <laughs> like, yeah. you could take that head and leave. It doesn't end with, this happened on my street and I was invited to Rachel's sleepover. I just wasn't a good friend, so I didn't fancy it. Sorry, what, what happened? <laughs> I think we're missing out. What happened next? Like, you can pick it up and go, oh, shit, all right then. Cheers. She <laughs> yeah. off. That's just I'll it. Put that did, she find out, did she find out what happened? Like, did the... When she turns on the light weather and sees the guy pulling hairs out, yeah. does he run off? Does he just carry on? Does she just sit and wait till he's just, done? Yeah, I, think I also she don't think he's fully bald. I don't think the number was accurate either. What? Like five? When he said five hundred and eighty-eight, guaranteed it pulled more out. Well, so you're you're annoyed that he might have been counting wrong. Well, if you if you're going to go through the effort of, of of counting, get it right. How do you know he got it wrong? Because imagine trying to pull out a hair. With your fat fingers, covered in blood, I assume. He might be using tweezers. What, to, catap- to decapitate a fucking head? He no, might to pull out the lot. hair, you oh. fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did your brain go, he's decapitated a woman with tweezers? <laughs> God, that'd be worse, wouldn't it? Imagine how that'd that'd be take be to decapitate my tweezers. He's been oh, Ow, I, I quite, ow, I'd, pr- ow. <laughs> I'd prefer that as a story. <laughs> it's like a fuck's sake. Like get a Chinese time. water torture or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, next. Okay. You better have more. Um, yeah, so this, this one's actually a really well-known one. So... Oh. Um, it involves a graveyard, so it's all it's the best a, ones do. It's uh, you might know it already. It's a story about girls having a slumber party and kind of making a dare, and the dare is to go and spend the night in the graveyard. Right. Yeah. Um, in a tent. No, just in a graveyard. Yeah. So they essentially do the do the dare, and one of the girls obviously draws the short straw in this, and she goes over to the graveyard. Mm. Um, but they need proof that she did it. So they said to her, "What you need to do is put a." wooden stake in the grave of this certain person just yeah. in the ground so then at least the next day when they go back to check oh. so this, inconsiderate the next the next day they'll see that the stake is in the ground to show that she actually went over there well, she, that, that seems a could, decent system to be fair but she could, uh, it's logical but could she not like just place the stake in an obscure location that isn't defiling someone's grave <laughs> yeah nasty well is th- Nasty I didn't fucking make the games. Rules. What? And also, she could put the stake in the ground and fuck off for a bit. Is she just have to go? Maybe she just had to go to the graveyard and leave. Okay, oh, spend right. the whole night there. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. The reason the reason it was this particular grave though was oh. because one of the girls had claimed that they heard screaming coming from one of the graves. Oh, right. right. So they, they'd Here heard that a man was buried alive. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, so it was obviously just to scare the girl, though, to be like, oh, yeah, this mm. happened, so go yeah. to that particular grave. Um, so to prove that, she had to do that. And then she mm. took that and drove it into the ground. As she tried to leave the graveyard, she felt something grabbing her and screamed. And then the next day, the girls went over to the graveyard and found her dead body there. Jeez. And what had happened is that she tried to escape the graveyard and what she thought is that the person had come out essentially a zombie i guess grabbed her and kept her trapped there so she died of fright and obviously cold and whatnot overnight but what had actually happened she dragged the stake into the ground and trapped her own hoodie in it and as she tried to escape she was trapped to the ground and it scared her too much so she had a heart attack and died <laughs> that's that's i mean hat right first I don't, shit, look, I don't i don't want to shit all over this story but how long is her hoodie yeah. for her to catch herself? How would you do? You'd be lying how, on the yeah. ground. Yeah. <laughs> no, so they didn't but... specify the hood. Could have been like the little bottom of the hoodie. Was it the hood or was it the bottom of the hoodie? <laughs> <laughs> we need they don't give me enough specifics in these stories. I didn't write them. Right. I hope you got more of these. Okay. Uh, she, this one. She quite... must have a hell of a hell of a grit, hell of power to 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 put that stake <laughs> so hard into the ground that her running for her life doesn't. Break this the stake out of the ground. Also, died of fright. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> no, heart attack. 
her heart was so elevated and pump and fast from all that that, that she had a heart attack she had a stroke mental <laughs> she, well, <laughs> they're not the same well, they, yeah, they're, they're similar they are, you know they're they totally are, different things yeah. right? they both involve I, the heart I can feel yeah. that like She's none of us are buying scared. this story no, so yeah. he yeah. 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 <laughs> he just keeps up in the yeah. like, up yeah. in the ante she, got, yeah. she had really, cancer she, she was dying yeah. anyway yeah. she got really scared she got lung cancer okay um let's move on we'll do one more you got one chance to redeem yourself. Okay. Yeah, if it's good, you have another. If it's shit, we're moving on. Okay. Let's do a proper story in this one. Oh, oh. I, that's what I asked for originally. Oh, yeah. I don't think you he's ready? holding better and better stories back. Though. Yeah. That's good. Well, the, of, that's good drama. The, yeah. the issue was, it's like Jack went, have you got more? And I went, yeah, I have. I did. Um, got a new phone last week, so it lost all of my old uh, ones. So oh, I had to search yes, these no. literally yeah, phone, before. Yeah. iPhone 11. Oh, someone's doing all right. Boy. Jesus, yeah. fucking hell. Thanks, happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That percentage is going down. <laughs> so I'm on the I'm on the nine. <laughs> One on. cold winter night. Yeah. Sixteen year old Katie was home alone. Always a girl. Her parents had gone out to a dinner party. It had been <laughs> sexist, didn't it? Yeah. Makes yeah. you sick. Really yeah. does. It Men are s- never scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where's the diversity? When are we gonna get out <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Can we put a straight white male in one of these yeah. stories? Oh. Fuck's sake. So Katie was home alone. Her parents had gone out to a dinner party. It had been snowing all afternoon, but had recently stopped. After studying for a few hours, she decided to relax a little bit. She made some popcorn, my kind of girl, well, got a nice know, thick blanket, <laughs> yeah, and laid it. laid back on the couch to watch some TV in the living room. What is she watching? Doesn't know. Doesn't say. Doesn't matter. Uh, in... The television was positioned in front of um, one side of the glass sliding door that led to the patio to her backyard. By midnight, Katie's parents still hadn't come home and she was gripped with fear because from the corner of her eye, she could have sworn that she saw the glimpse of a very strange looking man staring at her, standing outside the glass door behind the television. That, oh. would, that would be quite scary to be fair. Yeah, yeah that was terrified. Nice. Best story so far, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terrified, she panicked, pulled the blanket over her head and grabbed the phone um, and called the police. I, this is one thing I don't get in horror films when they see something scary, so they go under a duvet or under a blanket. All you're now doing is meaning when you take that off, they're going to be right that there. bad thing could be anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's always the way, though, isn't it? Yeah. Um, called the police, and as luck would have it, there was a patrol car not too far from her house. Convenient, lucky. Good. Yeah. <laughs> in a few minutes, the police had got to the scene and told them that the stranger outside couldn't have been there. Because it had snowed all day, there were absolutely no fi- footprints outside. Right. Um, the police had a look around, though, was just to make sure that she was okay. <laughs> there was nothing. Right. Um, respect for the police getting there so quickly, by the way. Yeah. I don't think police yeah. get enough compliments and stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, well, then. Also, well how, like, I, I, you know, I never really think blue. of this. Like, how shit. So if you think from this girl's perspective, like, oh, my God, there's something outside. You know, really scary, really scary. The police have to look for that. Yeah, you know, they turn up and they have to actively seek out the scary thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you say, props to well done, well mental. Done, it's like in a terror attack. Like uh, this isn't funny at all, but like in a terror <laughs> attack, like when people are running away. from <laughs> Yeah, the they're scene, running to, to the it. Scene. Yeah, it's a fair yeah. play to him. If there's anything we've taken from this uh, Halloween <laughs> special, it's that the police. You're all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. So yeah, um, the cops yeah. tell her that she's probably. Did you just say police carry on? <laughs> I didn't. But I wish I had. Fucking hell. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the cops tell her that she's probably just really tired, and her imagination has gotten the better of her, so... better, better of her, and yeah. she's scared because her parents have been out for the night. Yeah. She started to feel relieved, but still a little bit shaken. The police officer are about to leave. Be- uh, police officers are about to leave. Oh, don't tell me the police are the bad thing. <laughs> and one of them stopped to look Spoiler behind. Alert. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> but we've been bigging them up and it yeah. turns out that he's the murderer. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the policemen stopped and noticed something behind the couch he was sitting on. Uh. His jaw dropped and his skin went pale. Katie noticed the man's reaction and jumped up to look too. She saw what made the officer react that way. There were wet footprints on the carpet behind the couch. She, she hadn't seen a man outside the door. That's where the she'd police seen had just his, come in. <gasps> she'd seen his reflection um, oh. when he was standing oh. behind her. <gasps> I've got a little bit of... Goosebumps there. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, what happened next? Where is she? He, well, he'd, he'd left by that what point. Was it? She what? called the police. He's got in. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, he'd been there. So she noticed him in the window. That's quite. I like called that. the police, yeah, and then yeah, dis- yeah. he disappeared. So obviously, for the rest of the night, oh, she's like, "Is he going to go back?" That's Fuck a bit yeah. similar to the one you said in the first episode of Urban Legends about the mirrors. Yeah, yeah. Tell, that kind tell of thing. Robbie about that. Uh, you know, you know the classic thing in the mirrors. Um, You've probably films. seen it in the loads of horrors. The in cabinets the in the bathroom. 
where you can shut the oh, mirror yeah, yeah, and yeah. then suddenly someone's behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That classic thing. There's actually an origin behind that. Oh. That um, in like big apartment buildings in America where people obviously used to live like flats, behind there you could get through to walkways to do all the plumbing. So that's how like plumbers yeah. used to get through to sort out certain rooms in the place. And people had realized this and started burgling people's houses by going through the walkways and bursting through oh. those windows, uh, through the mirrors. And then there was actually a time where two people burst into someone's house and then killed the woman because they didn't expect her to be there. And that's true. Wow. Scary. <laughs> your that's frown, it. your makeup frown. <laughs> that's true. And it just <laughs> looked, <laughs> it looked fucking weird. Oh, have, spooky. have you heard of the, um, the, the viral Tinder date that went? That went viral um, recently about the the lady that took the um, man home, the, the lady that fell ill on her date. No. Oh, I think I've seen. Is it was this, real. This rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is a spooky one. Oh, this, this is, is true, this is, and it's is it? This rank. is horrible. This is I scary. Heard it. Yeah, it went viral about a year or two ago, um, and it's about a young girl that shared her experience of a Tinder date that could have potentially ended up being fatal. She was on a date with a man, as far as I remember, and she fell ill. So she went back to, she felt so ill, she had to cut the date early. Um, early um, and she felt bad, so she invited the man back for a coffee, a cup of tea, just, just not to ruin his night, basically. She went back, she went to have a cup of tea, and she felt so bad. She just said, sorry, you are actually going to have to go. Like I feel the fucking shit. And this story was sent from the girl to another girl on WhatsApp using voice note. And oh. I may as well just play the voice note because oh fucking hell yeah because yeah. it's really oh. yeah and I got the voice note here. So. Um, one of my friends from what uh, she went for dinner with this girl the other night, and one of her friends um had been speaking to this guy on Tinder for like six months, and I called him off, and then eventually he was like, "Oh, do you want to meet up?" Um, uh, we should uh, like go on a date, and then she was like, "Yeah, okay." Um, so he picked her up, and they drove to a restaurant, and um, he was like, and then she started to feel really sick. So um, she was like, "Oh, do you mind if I go home? Like, I'm not feeling very well." And he was like, "Yeah, that's fine. I'll give you a lift home." And then in the car, she started to feel a bit better. So he was like, um, "So she was like, oh, um, do you want to come into my house for a coffee?" So he was like, "Yeah, okay, that's that sounds good." And then he, when he got inside, she started feeling really sick again. She was like, oh, do you mind actually if you leave? Like, um, I don't feel very well. So he was like, yeah, no, totally fine. I'll go. He left and then she went to bed. And then she woke up in the middle of the night and she could hear like something downstairs. She didn't think anything of it. And then she heard it again and it sounded like someone was moving her kitchen table. So she like ran and shut her door and rang the police and was like, there's someone in my house, like you need to come. So the police were like, okay, stay on the phone. Like we're going to come to your house. Um, they got to her door and they're like, your door's locked. Um, I don't, uh, we don't think anyone will be in there. She was like, no, someone's here. I give you permission to knock down my door. So they knocked down her door and then she heard like some scuffling, like someone being pinned down. Um, and then the policeman came up to her room, knocked on the door and was like, it's the police, like, it's fine, you're safe, like, we've got the man, you can open the door. Um, and then they were like, he's, like, it's fine, he's, he's not here anymore, but we still don't think you should stay the night here. And, um, she was like, okay, that's fine, but, um, can I see what he's done downstairs? And they're like, we really don't think you should see what he's done. Um, we don't think you should see what's happened. And then she was like, no, I need to see what he's done to my house. She went downstairs and he'd put up plastic on all of her furniture, like clear plastic sheets to cover it all up. And there was a saw and a hammer lined up on her floor. Um, and then basically um, they found out that he'd like drugged her and the amount of drugs that was in her system, like she shouldn't have woken her up. And... Um, also, like, when he came into the house, the reason he got in his cruise, he put his car keys down next to her keys. And then when he left, he picked up both of them and he let himself back in. Like, literally, I am never, ever going on a Tinder day ever again. Like, it actually killed me. What do you think of that, then? That that's, is... that's my basic first date move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, that is fucking mental. Covered it all in plastic. That so. is that's Dexter shit. That is yeah. that's yeah. horrible. Yeah, is that the one you've that heard is before? Rancid. Yeah, exactly the same one. It it does just sound like a brilliant story though. That's a bit of an urban legend, I think. I, I just think that delivery across. was too good though for it yeah. to be false. I feel like that was a genuine, just like a friend reciting a story to a friend. That's just storytelling, yeah. though, isn't it? I believe it. I believe okay. it. Right. 
Hello and welcome back to the final bit of this Halloween special. It's pretty long, isn't it? It's about, what, hour 40? Something like that. It's pretty... <laughs> You're just reading what it says on the screen, yeah. so... <laughs> it depends how much we cut out, though. Yeah, we're probably at about an hour and a half. You reckon? Jesus, well, I hope you're enjoying it. Please do excuse me while I eat some melon. I won't eat some melon at the moment because I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna read some. Uh, I, the, what, the joys what, of a pod- twist. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of a podcast is that no one needs to see what you're doing, and you're still telling them, and it was pointless anyway. Because if not, they'll just hear me eat them. You just said you wouldn't, and now you are. Yeah. So a, a little video bit. as well, isn't it's it? Only a little bit. Yeah. So I got you guys on Twitter. Um, if you're not, if you're not following the Happy Hour account on Twitter, by the way, please do. It's at Jax with two A, uh, two A's Happy Hour. Jack's happy hour. Um, I got you guys to submit your ghost stories, and myself, Stevie, Doody, and Robbie Knox are now going to go through and talk about them. Um, the one that jumps out at me straight away is from a guy called Sam Taylor, who I think is a friend of the show. Uh, and the reason it jumps out is not because of his name, but because it's got an attachment. I don't know what the attachment is. Okay. Could be a Trojan horse, but <clears throat> we will see. So the title of this one is called Paranormal Experience I Had in Malden, Essex. Nice. I- Fuck me, that's where long. salt comes from, isn't Jesus it? Jesus Christ, that is long. Salt. Yeah, more than salt. Oh, oh really? Famous for its salt. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Well, well, there we go. I was, just, I was just telling you a fact to fill in. Yeah. yeah. That, that means oh, true, so you're yeah. a model pro, you are. Yeah. That's, that's why true, you. Yeah. What's your podcast called that you do? The podcast I've been doing that will um, hopefully come back at some stage is called Football Legends, and it's uh, reading stories out of footballers' autobiographies, and it's very popular, exclusive to Spotify. I really like it. I enjoyed Good. it myself. Thank you. Yeah. I enjoyed it myself. Yeah. Um, I like the one, the Vinnie Jones one. With yeah, the I was going to say that. Mm. say that. Brilliant. S- Sam Taylor. I've got a bit of melon stuck in my throat. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <Is that his laughs> message? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jack. This is a story from when I stayed in a small place called Mal... Yeah, I got that from the title. This town is known to be the most haunted in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically in Essex. Yeah. And also famous for their salt. <laughs> yeah. It's a, very sp- it's a very small place near the... Thames. Can I just can I just say? Do you think that's a coincidence that you throw the salt around to protect oh, yourself ah. from the Midnight Man, and Malden is haunted? I love the way we talk. See, people think our podcasts are unplanned and they're messy. But look, we we've just brought it back. Yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> full Sorry. circle, bit. Mm. Um. So we stay in there because uh, my family and I were visiting a friend called Natasha, who my mum used to work with at the airport. Because I live a few hours from there. We would stay at hers for about two nights. Anyway, the place we stayed is called Maldon. It's a very small place in the Thames Estuary, whatever that is. It's like where the Thames, Thames meets the sea. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Didn't know what that meant. And so there was only a handful of hotels, places to stay. No chains like Premier Inn or whatsoever. So we stayed in a small place called the Blue Boar Inn, which I believe is still open. It's a pub slash hotel and it dates back to the 13th century. Second we got there, I got this weird feeling and we checked in nonetheless. The first night was uneventful. And my mum and I shared a room and my dad and brother stayed in a separate one as there is only one family room in the hotel. What? I just love that he went in, got a weird feeling, but we still checked in. When has anyone ever walked into somewhere and go, oh, not for me, when you're already there? Yeah, I know, yeah. but... but Too late. Uh, I, just, I, I, don't, just I, don't always... weird, I don't know if a weird feeling is enough to put me off. Yeah. I know, it's always if just a thing. For it as well. In stories, that's always a thing people say, oh, I did get a weird feeling about the place before anything yeah. happened. If nothing <laughs> happened, would he have said that he had a weird no, feeling? No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who pulled the short straw, though? Because let's just say it all went to paranormal shit, yeah? Yeah. Who would you rather be in a room with, your mum or your dad? Oh, my dad. Yeah. He's see. strong. He's a, he's a he's a hard bloke. And my yeah. mum's addicted to the bottle. There we go. Um, <laughs> Teed it up for you and you smashed the home run. Um, but yeah, no, I was just, yeah. Mm. He's, no, he's pulled the short I should have said my mum because she's fucking great at dealing with spirits. Hey! <laughs> oh! It's not as good the second time round, but, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, the first night was on. The day after we arrived, we went to a museum where I bought a World War II plane ruler with all the different aircraft from the war on it. Class. Can I just say how much I'm enjoying the detail of this yeah. story? It's he's, really, like he's painting a really rich picture. I know. Yeah. Like, like the fact that the girl worked at the airport. That yeah. wasn't necessary. It was really <laughs> added a little bit of texture to the story. Yeah, well in, Sam. Well in, Sam. Uh, that was besides the point, however, that. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> you, you can tell I didn't even mean that. Like, no. uh, that 
that that was beside the point. However, that ruler links back to some of the. Sh- oh, that was besides the point. However, that ruler links back to some of the shit that happened. <laughs> when we got back to the hotel in the evening, we were playing Uno. In, I love Uno. Good shout, Sam. In the area below, and the waiter, who happened to be the receptionist as well, due to the hotel having so little rooms, asked if we wanted to hear about ghosts that are in the hotel. Probably not, mate. Yeah. <laughs> give, give that one a miss. He was dead the whole time. Calling it now. Ooh, there is three. A ghost horse which walks over the cobbled street by the hotel a grey lady who stalks the top corridor and a poltergeist and a poltergeist child who haunts the family room anyway when we had come back briefly to the hotel earlier in the day around lunchtime before we went to see natasha i had put the ruler i had just bought along with some other stuff in the bunk bed section of the family room the room was separated by walls into three areas bunk bed for kids where i thought i'd be sleeping the bathroom and a little connector area and the main bed area, which was also the lounge, if you will. He actually put if you will, which I like. Remember remember where I put the ruler, as that is important. Do we all remember where I he put the ruler? Already. Bunk beds. Bunk beds. Bunk beds. Bunk beds section. Being young, around eight or nine, I got really worked up over the ghosts that allegedly haunted the place where we were staying, up to the point where I was crying. Oh, what a great trip advisor review this is going to get. And asked to sleep in the master bed with my mum. The hotel is really tall, and there were hundreds of paintings up the walls of people from centuries ago. The corridors were extremely wonky and uneven, which added to the creepy feel of the place. We went up to our room on the top floor, and the reason I was scared was because the poltergeist was said to haunt the room where we were now staying in, which they had moved us to in which they had moved us to to accommodate all four of us and the grey lady was said to haunt the corridor in which our room was on when we got into the room the ruler which I had bought had been moved from the bunk bed all the way to the foot of the bed where I was going to sleep that night the scary thing is there was and is no room service at this blue bore inn and so it wasn't as if a cleaner had come in to move the ruler i immediately had an oh fuck moment as i had realized it had moved from where i had put it my brother also worked himself up earlier in the day as he kept saying he had footsteps around the bottom of his bunk bed the room was very big so you could hear things in one room which you couldn't in the other these events must have been to do with that child poltergeist who had said who they said who was said to haunt my exact room. My mum reassured me that it was all fine, and after brushing my teeth, I went to bed. The room had two big glass windows which overlooked the church, which was next to the hotel. Fun fact, the ch- oh, I don't know if we can deal with all these fun facts, Sam, really. The, the church was one of the far... Oh, sorry, I thought I read that wrong. It's right. Fun fact, the church has one of the fattest... <laughs> has one of the fattest people in England. <laughs> what? That's one, oh, the, that's one of the fattest people in England buried there. And when it was his funeral, they had to cut away the doors to, to fit the guy's coffin through. Right, right back. <laughs> Could they have done it in the garden or something? What a hell of a tangent. And then he's even written right back to the story. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm really enjoying this story. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful telling. I didn't have a phone back then as I was too young, so I only had an iPod, which I didn't... <laughs> Which Irrelevant then. <laughs> Why is he telling us? Which I did <laughs> Why do we need to know we that? Need to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I woke up around 6 30 a.m., which I knew because of the digital clock next to my bed. Amazing. <laughs> right, there's two more paragraphs. I looked up oh. to see if anyone else was awake, and I had never been more fe- fearful and scared in my life from what I saw. There was a, what I can only describe as a female fug- figure oy oy, looking out of the window, <laughs> looking out of the window right next to me. If you've seen the film The Woman in Black, I'd say she was dressed a lot like her in black. Then, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> I dive back under the duvet as most kids and adults do, as they find safety from doing it. Again, tying it back to the... Yeah, Yeah, we're class. Make sure you give us five-star rating on iTunes, can you? Uh, I didn't look up for around five, ten seconds as I was hoping whatever it was was just my imagination because I'd just woken up. I looked again, and it was still there. The reason I have decided it wasn't my eyes playing tricks on me is because the only light in the room came from the building where the church was being illuminated by mini spotlights around its perimeter. The figure was as clear as could be. And it didn't click on my head at the time, but I must have been seeing the grey lady who was said to walk the corridor where our room was. I went back under the cover and woke up my mum by shoving and pushing her as I was too scared to make noise. Once she woke up, I was distraught and didn't talk to her. All I did was cuddle her. About three minutes after I told what had happened and the figure had obviously gone, I turned all the lights on and my mum got pissed that I had woken her up at the time anyway. (laughs) My dad and older brother woke up too from the other room and came in to see what had happened. This was when I found out about what my brother had heard maybe two or three years ago we talked about it 
we talked about it there when we were out for a meal and my dad told us something which scares the fuck out of me. I'm assuming my mum knew, but my dad but but my dad didn't want to tell us at the time and scare us even more, but this is what he said. When he woke up, he said his arms were crossed over his chest, like how they do at the funerals. And where, the, where and, was his dad? And the Come words door, and the words rest in peace, rest in peace were going over and over in his mind. I'm getting chills right in this as it was really fucked up. I've attached some photos of the place, which you could show in the episode, as well to a link to their website which involves the history of their place, Sam Taylor. Note, I've just checked and they've refurbished the family room. However, you can still see in the attached image how it looked when I stayed there. That, well, that is, is a brilliant. Good story. Yeah, really Well good done, Sam. Sam. Yeah. That's class. You like that? I do. Yeah. I believe him. Yeah, good story. All right, well, be more enthusiastic about yeah. it. Such, it's a story. Sam, such I mean, a prick. But <laughs> it's a story. No, it's a... You, Sam, you should really uh, go into writing or something, mate, because you had yeah. us on the, on the edge of our seats. Yeah. That was really good. Well written. Very well. There was written. a lot of detail. Mm. Who wants number when, one? When you just wait, when you when you talk about um, getting bad like bad feelings at hotels, and would you ever not go to hotels? That yeah. I was in a um, I was in a hurricane once in America. I went on a road trip. And we're going. It was me, and my friend Sally, and my friend Speedo. We were, we were going from Boston down to New Orleans, and and we saw there was a hurricane on, on like there was a hurricane. <laughs> yeah. oh, change the channel. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's check it out. Um, so this hurricane was on, but then, so we saw the map, and we thought, well, where we're going is passing by the edge of the hurricane, so that'd be all right. We don't we won't go near the middle. It's like a hundred miles from the middle of the hurricane. Mm. So I thought we'll go, we'll go through that. Um, to drive it along, it became very obvious very quickly that the edge of a hurricane is still a hurricane. You know, <laughs> yeah. like that. I didn't really, I thought it would like die down a bit as you went further away, but it didn't. It was mental. <laughs> and like at one point, we were driving along, and you know, in a film where electric wires blow down and hit the ground and sparks come off, mm, yeah, that happened like 50 meters in front of our car. And at that point, like Sally in uh, the car side so was crying a bit. We were driving along, going, "This is getting pretty bad." <laughs> um, and it was, it was, it was unbelievably mental. And there were no other cars in the road. The only other time people you see were like emergency services and stuff. We're going, "This is, this is a nightmare." Wow. And but all the hotels we could find were full, but with with emergency services from out of state ready for the cleanup sort of thing afterwards. So people were already in. So we're going, "Oh no!" So we were driving along like this, and we were listening to the local radio, and it was saying um, something like. Um, uh, about how the hurricane's hitting Wilmington. Everyone needs to get inside now. It's a danger of dying. We're going, oh, at least we're not as bad as that place. And like a minute later, it said, welcome to Wilmington. We're like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. wow. So we go down. It was uh, getting really bad. We went to one hotel. We sort of stopped and pulled off the car. And um, we got out. And me and Sally went in. Speed us in the car. We went in and said, look, have you got any rooms? We went, look, we've got one room, but it's a smoking room. So you might want to go and check it out. So we went in. And this room was so rank, but there was a hurricane. And we went and looked around this room. Yeah, yeah, I mean this this here and it sort of it, it smells a bit and all this stuff. I'm going, yeah, okay, like that. I mean, okay, th- thank you to the person. I just looked back to Sally and she looked at her and went, We're going back into the hurricane, aren't we? She went, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was so bad that we'll just go back into the hurricane. <laughs> we went back and so. drove for a bit longer to eventually we found a holiday in. But, See, if anything, so. those stories are more scary than the ghost stories, because that's real. Yeah. A hurricane could fucking kill you. Yeah. Um but haven't said that. Idea. Let's go back <laughs> to a few more ghost ones. Yeah, a few ghost ones. Uh, we'll do a couple more, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap up. Harry Reynolds. Now, um, again, not read these. Could be shit. His title is called ha- Halloween. Dot dot. Whatever that's called. What's that called? Double dot. Not really like a colon. colon. Yeah, a colon. Oh, yeah, oh sorry. Yeah. I you meant like a dot, dot, coming. Dot. Yeah, no, nah, right. like horizontal. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, vertical. <coughs> uh, Halloween dot dot I can't believe I've just had a fucking 30 second conversation about a colon yeah. <laughs> Jesus as well as uh, when you forgot what carol singers were <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Halloween colon the fall afternoon all just wanted to start this unrelated just wanted to start this unrelated to Halloween and just say congratulations oh he's talking about the 50 days of fitness we'll move on uh, my I'm <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to be a cunt <laughs> yeah. but it's not the time my my weird ghost story is from about two years ago I'll try and keep it short and sweetish. so my auntie Chrissy passed away six years ago sorry to hear that mate but she was one of those aunts that isn't family but your mum's best mate so you end up calling her auntie right Anyway, she... <laughs> sorry about that. Not really, you aren't yeah. is it? <laughs> anyway, she passed away, and uh, when she did, on two occasions, my dad claims to have seen her in the house. Now, one of the times my dad told me that he came downstairs to, gla- to grab a glass of water, 
And when he did, he thought my mother was already downstairs and went to help her up from the floor after she had ha- after she had fallen. However, she hadn't and no one was there. My dad walked upstairs and my mum was in bed. My dad explained to my mum that he tried to just help someone up from the floor downstairs who was wearing blue tartan pyjamas. When this happened, my uncle, who isn't my uncle, just Chrissy's partner, uh, was... <laughs> <laughs> so irrelevant. They, they're not. They're really not respecting naming conventions. No, my brother, who is actually the bloke who works at the chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so where was I? Um, uh, it was just Chrissy's partner. Confusing, I know. Was called. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> least called he knows. Chrissy's partner <laughs> was called, and my dad explained what happened. And my dad explained what happened uh, and that he saw a lady fall on the floor in blue part and pyjamas. Weirdly, my auntie had the exact pair and wore them every evening. Because strange things started happening in our household and not his, he stopped speaking to the family. Weird bloke anyway. (laughs) (laughs) He's just going, you keep seeing my dead wife. Don't want to talk to you lot anymore (laughs) then. Or maybe this guy was cheating with her. And then he went, yeah, she was, uh, and confirmed the pajamas she used to wear. And that guy was like, I know your game. Ah, uh, you know so I mean? the dad was cheating all along. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I forgot his name, but sorry, mate. We've just figured out. Fast forward two years and nothing else has happened regarding my auntie. Life has continued as normal. One evening around midnight, I get thirsty. Now, the weird thing is, they put this in capitals, I never, ever get thirsty in the in the night. Like, that is, ever. That is weird. So for, <laughs> so, so for me to be thirsty in the night is abnormal enough. Anyway. <laughs> End the story yeah, there, though. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's an episode to itself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's midnight, so I go downstairs to get a drink. I get my drink, and on the way back through... I see someone fall. I go down to help them, but no one is there. The figure was wearing the exact clothing my dad said, the blue tartan bottoms. Now, I can't be sure this is my oh, auntie. Sorry, Blue. So you... She's got a tits out? Or what's going on? <laughs> like, yeah, well, well, well. Jordan, we were all thinking it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dead auntie, mate. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Family friend, not incest. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can't be sure this is my auntie, however, as it wasn't actually my auntie, as I... Exp- <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Yes, mate. Technically, it wasn't. We get it. Was it your mum's friend? <laughs> Thanks for reading. You- what? <laughs> That's it? No. 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 That is not the end. <laughs> no. That is it. Hold on. <laughs> he's not even worried that he's just seen a ghost. He's just querying whether it was actually his auntie. His auntie or not. Biologically, mate. I'm sorry to break it to you. No, it weren't. Yeah. It's Fuck. the woman your yeah. dad was cheating on your mum with. I, see. I saw the ghost, but I won't bother telling you what happened because it wasn't my auntie. She won't be interested. <laughs> yeah. We only care if it's her. Yeah. Oh. Cheers, what? mate. Uh, I love I love that he gave that like a movie title, Halloween, yeah, the, the Fall. fall. Yeah. Oh, I get it now yeah. because she keeps oh. falling over. Thanks for reading. Yeah. You guys have a fantastic podcast. Harry. Cheers, Cheers Harry. Harry. That's quite nice, Harry. Appreciate Thanks, that. Harry. Right, these are good. These are good. Ghost star... Oh, yes. Darcy Evans has put ghost car story, in brackets, attached diagram. Diagram. Oh, oh yes. Oh, on, yeah. girl. Hi, <laughs> You're right. And she said hello to you. <laughs> Hi, Jack and Doody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yes. Fuck her already. I love her. I love you What's her class. name? Uh, Darcy. Darcy Cunt. Darcy yeah. Evans. Darcy, we need, need more of you in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jack and Doody. Now, this happens. <laughs> <laughs> now, this happens when me and a mate were maybe about eight to ten. Yeah. Um, and we were walking back to her place to get some of her clothes to spend the weekend. So we are walking back past my paddock. It's about 8 p.m. She's got a paddock. Is she a horse? She's <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say fermented, but... I was polishing my hooves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, past my paddock. It's about 8 p.m. Probably... T- <laughs> She said it's about 8pm, and then in brackets, probably 10pm, to be honest. <laughs> what? Unless she's writing this on paper, she can surely make any amendments uh, she has. I have a recreational drug abuse <laughs> problem. It was a f- ketamine. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Horse tranquilizer, that's what Wee. it was. Um, it was a small country town with a population of 800-ish. Probably a thousand. <laughs> no, she, she didn't. didn't. No, no. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, anyway, we were walking and we're chatting. Next minute, we both feel a car go past us. It was never there. 
We were <laughs> straight to <laughs> the point. Electric car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little hybrid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we was never there, so we freaked out. We went back to my place to watch The Simpsons. There's more to the story. <laughs> There's more Don't to the story. Don't tell me that's it. But I'll keep it brief. Kind of the Stars. That's it. What? Yeah. A fucking Prius what? went past, and she's posted it in as a ghost yeah. story. Okay. Guys, well, wait, if you think about it, what's, what's a, the diagram? What's a car going by? If it's wait, like what's, a breeze. Wait, yeah. what's the diagram? Let's have a look. I, I, I can't think of a single part of that story that warrants a diagram. I'll try and explain the diagram to people. There's a key, right? Yeah. Which is key to, for most diagrams. She's done a red blob. How far we got? In brackets, three hundred meters. A purple blob. Her house. A blue blob. Her house. And a red blob. The car that was going past, <laughs> and then the trip to her house. <laughs> so it just showed the journey of, w- of which she. Of <laughs> can what she's can got. I just say that's uh, the kind of fan you guys uh, get? Sorry, Glad she's uh, Google Maps there. Yeah, yep. she's she's found that's it on Google amazing. Maps, and then she's made her own key. Wow, brilliant! I'm I glad. Mean, an effort a there, lot of effort, least. but not not a great story. So basically, like there was a breeze or something. Uh, yeah, or, or a, a car, car went past. Car. Yeah, yeah, an electric. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Darcy. Darcy. Thanks no, for not mentioning me. Down. Sorry, she Darcy. Shite. Yeah, you we're going down. Okay, right. We'll do, we'll but do. you tried. We appreciate the graph. Before, can, can you. How many just, more do you want? Well, before we started all of this, you said you were getting emails come through and you had. You got it. one with a subject title that said, My mum couldn't ground me, so oh, a yeah, ghost so did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you please tell us what that story is? <sighs> did you read uh, and it was shit? <clears throat> right, let me find. Let me find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so I'll read you some of the titles. If any of them take your pick. Right. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. Anthony Lee. A ghost grounded me because my mum wouldn't. <laughs> it's like the front cover of like a women's magazine that you find <laughs> yeah. in the supermarket, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's life. Hey, guys. Yeah. Bit of a long one, but context was needed. When I was younger, my parents got divorced. Dad moved on to have a relationship within a year or so, but my mum was struggling to find someone. She signed up for a dating website in 2011, and after a few unsuccessful dates, connected with a man who Will calls Steve. Steve was a PE teacher and he had one five-year-old daughter who we'll call Ellie and two nieces called Zara and Denise. So he's give their names. Give their names. Yeah. Give her up on that. I can't be asked to give more names. Yeah. <laughs> Zara and Denise's mum, Sarah, who was also Steve's sister. What? My niece is called Denise. Yep. A babe. They've called a kid Denise. Yeah. I mean. But she is Denise. Yep. Wow! <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh, that's sick. Uh, Sa- Sarah passed. Uh, Sarah and Denise's mum, Sarah, Zara and Denise's mum, Sarah, who was also Steve's sister, passed away a couple of years before this point. So Steve looked after the girls. But almost- it was all right because it was just actually a family friend, <laughs> <laughs> almost as if he was their adoptive father. When Steve and my mum got quite friendly through the dating website, the plan was to meet up. But the plans would always fall through, usually because something had happened Steve's end. So my mum suggested that they talk on MSN so that they could use their webcams to see each other whilst having an audible conversation. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why. (laughs) That's why. All right. All right, She was flicking the bean, mate. I hate to say. Your mum was flicking the bean. Carry on. When he agreed to that, they loaded up MSN and turned their webcams on. Lo and behold, Steve's webcam didn't work. This was very suspicious to me and my mum. But she was able to overlook it until it got fixed. Until that point, my mum would speak to him via webcam and he would type back his responses via... Oh, it's dodgy, isn't it? Yeah, this is MTV Catfish. All yeah, over. she's literally been catfished. Yeah. Yeah. Getting Eve involved. <clears throat> this went on for quite a long time. Uh, oh. There would always be an excuse for why his webcam wouldn't work, whether it was because he didn't know that it brought one or uh, <laughs> that's not a sorry. reason for it not to work you don't own one <laughs> sorry I don't oh, know shit, if I, I bought, bought one <laughs> or if he didn't know if it was faulty uh, yeah. but because my mum was in a vulnerable state following a painful divorce she was willing to accept the excuses at face value oh, because she wanted no. to feel affection from someone which is exactly what Steve was giving her that's the relationship right. got to the stage where me and my young sister 12 and 14 years old at the time were introduced to Steve via webcam and Ellie his 5 year old daughter was introduced to us she wouldn't type back her responses to what we said but she would type back her responses, but we couldn't see her. Like I said, I was sceptical, but because my mum seemed happy enough, who was I to dampen her spirits and happiness? Steve slowly became more and more involved in our lives without ever meeting my mum or showing his face. Bold text now. Here's where it gets really weird. <laughs> well. When talking on the webcam to Ellie one day, out of the blue, she typed, Hello, Auntie Sarah. Me and my mum were confused and asked what she meant by this. <clears throat> Sarah has been dead for a couple of years, as far as we know. Ellie said, Auntie Sarah is behind you. She is waving. Nice. 
We turned around and saw absolutely nobody else with us in the room. It played on our mind for the rest of the day. I had heard stories of children being able to see people who had passed away, but I always, th- I, <coughs> I always felt that was an old wives' tale. From that point on, things weren't quite right in the house. Some rooms were a bit chillier than others, and things moved from where I thought I'd left them, but I just dismissed them as an over dismissed it as an overactive imagination. Fast forward about three weeks, and my mum and Steve were arguing because I had done something I shouldn't have done. I can't remember, remember what it was now. The argument was because Steve wanted me grounded for a week, which usually meant no phone and no so- socialising with friends for a week, coupled with extra chores. But my mum thought I should only have a warning and a stern talking to at the time. The next day, my mum and my sister went out f- for lunch, but I wanted to stay at home. When they had gone, I set my phone down on the kitchen counter and started to make myself a sandwich on the opposite counter. When I had made my sandwich, I turned around to gather my phone, but it wasn't where I remember placing it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I decided to ring it using our landline, and I heard it ringing from upstairs. I followed the ringing into my my sister's room and my phone was on top of her stereo system which was at least five feet from floor level i couldn't have dropped it there i told my mum when she got back but obviously she didn't believe me the next day my mum and sister were out again and i was home alone i threw my phone on the couch whilst i went back to the fridge to get snacks i came back phone's gone again rang from the an- from the landline searched the house high and low but couldn't find it anywhere i even got my mum to help me look when she returned but we couldn't find it she was fuming that i'd lost it anyway That was Tuesday afternoon during half term. The following Tuesday, just as my alarm clock woke me up to get ready for school, my mum came into my bedroom looking confused. Look what I found, she said as she held out my phone. I asked her where she found it. It was in my underwear drawer on top of everything else. It hadn't been there at any other point, she replied. We racked our brains for ages, but eventually the only illogical conclusion we could draw was that Sarah, Steve's deceased sister, had witnessed the argument a week ago and and sided with her brother in regards to me being grounded so she must have removed my phone and turned it off so i couldn't ring it exactly a week later the length of the proposed punishment my phone was returned my mum is no longer in touch with steve and she never did actually meet or see him but everything now seems back to normal whoa that's quite weird that is weird i like that they went oh well, the only thing it could have been is Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they jump to that quite yeah. quickly, don't they? To me, that seems like one of these pieces of fiction that is like, um, good. Like, uh, uh, like somebody could have uh, come up with that. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily believe that or not. Yeah. I know what you mean. But that was, yeah, I like the twist and turns. It was a good story. Sh- strangely, that reminded me of a ghost happening that happened to my cousin. Oh. Yeah. I think I've told you before. Right. Um, and this this is spooky, and when it, I remember when it happened at the time, I wasn't around, but I, I was I was told. So um, I'm sure they won't mind me using their names. So my my cousin Tom, um, some of you may recognise him. He was actually a meme for a little while. He was the final boss of Top Man. Yeah, Those of you that have seen that meme. That. We'll, we'll know who he is. Yes, that is indeed my cousin. Do you Tom. remember the guy that was like massive, but then he had the tiny little legs? And yeah. S- and somebody found him on Tinder and put, I've just found the final boss of yeah. Top Man. That's, that's his my cousin. cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my cousin Tom. Yeah, that's our, our, mums, our mums are twins and we're the same age. But anyway, um, so uh, a few years back, him and his friends did a Ouija board, right? Did it in his own house, in his spare bedroom. And I have to say, like, I mean, obviously we have dabbled in Ouija boards now. Ooh, yeah, I, mean, I now think they are bollocks. But at the time, and to be fair, all the way up to that night when, when we did one, until we kind of thought, okay, yeah, if this is anything like the rest of the night, then we'll probably be safe. Mm. Um, but at that time, I was like, oh, F that shit, mm. right? And uh, let alone doing it in your own house. Anyway, they did it in their own house. They allegedly contacted someone from the other side. I believe her name was Deborah. Something like that. Debbie, Deborah. Anyway, um, so, so yeah. And uh, to be fair, I have been in that spare bedroom since, and it is oddly chilly, but that doesn't... Anyway, so so Tom and his mates do this Ouija board. It's a, it gets a bit chilly. It's a bit weird. They buy it. They think, like, holy shit, this is this is crazy. He instantly regrets it. He He calls me and tells me all the rest of it, right? Fast forward a few months, um, Tom's younger brother, Aaron, because this is sorry, this is at Tom's dad's house, right? So Tom's younger brother, Aaron, comes over, stays in the spare bedroom. Now, Aaron at the time, I want to say, was probably like nine or ten. So you don't tell a kid that. And Thomas claims he never, ever told him, right? Aaron 
uh, one night or one early, early hours of the morning, runs through to Thomas crying, saying there is a woman sat at the end of my bed and he was like shitting himself. Then Thomas obviously shits himself because he thinks I have not told him anything about this and there is a, a woman at the end of his bed. How old was the boy? Nine, ten, maybe even eight at the time. There's but there's yeah. a lot of stories where like the kids see something and it matches up with the pre story that they wouldn't know. Yeah. Very weird, bizarre. Very bizarre. Strange. Very bizarre. Well <laughs> that's Halloween for you. Yeah. All wrapped up. Spooky. <laughs> you right, Robbie? What did yeah, you think fine. of that, Robbie? Spooked. It was all right. <laughs> I think we've had bad. I mean, it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I tried. This. I mean, I mean, no disrespect to you, wasn't you? <laughs> no, to you. I, yeah, you're I, just the I'm messenger. Just, just the, but yeah. that little fucking nine-year-old needs to needs to pick his act up. Well, Do you know what I mean? By a car last week. So. I was at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's maybe, on the mend. Maybe it was Deborah it's, driving. Maybe it was Deborah driving. Yeah, but Aaron, quick recovery. Get well soon. God bless Aaron. Yeah. This has been <laughs> Happy Hour Wayne. Bumper long Halloween bloody special. Yeah. Robbie's been our guest. Thanks, Rob. Thank you for having me. You can come on whenever you want, mate. You're a superstar fucking YouTuber now. Yeah. So we you are. Absolutely big time. Influencer. Influencer. Yeah. Um, do head over to iTunes, to Spotify, and leave us a five-star review if you can. Apparently that really helps. Yeah. Um, and check us out on Twitter. And again, go and check us on YouTube because we've got melted faces by this point because it was very, very hot in here. Yeah. Have a great Halloween, guys. Stevie, thank you very much. That's all right. Doody, cheers. Pleasure. Robbie Knox, thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time, guys. Happy Halloween. Ooh.